Hello everybody, and just here, and uh, welcome back to Arifureta Season 2. The full name of this series is actually... Let me check it out. It's super long. It's Arifureta Shokugyo de Sekai Saikyo, which I think translates to something something of the world's strongest, or the world's greatest, or something like that. Sekai is world, Saikyo is best, greatest, strongest. I have no clue what Shokugyo and Arifureta mean, but I'm just calling it Arifureta. It's season two. Uh, I have seen season one. Uh, I have seen it twice, actually. Uh, once I've seen it alone, and uh, the second time I've seen it with uh, a reaction series accompanying, accompanying me. You won't find a reaction series to season one on my channel, because back when it was coming out, I uh, haven't been into the whole reaction content making stuff, but if you do want to see a uh, reaction series to Arifureta Season 1, I can recommend you the one that I've seen, which was made by Nozivix, and it's gonna be linked somewhere in the card in the top right corner for you. I'm probably also gonna link it down in the pinned comment or something. So if you haven't seen that, go over there, watch it, and come back to this reaction. Uh, usually, I would think twice about reacting to a sequel season without having reacted to the first one, but not in this case. Arifureta isn't really a show that warrants much care, you know, about it. It's another show that you really think about. It's pretty much the equivalent of fast food, or uh, as someone put it well, that's someone being Nozivix, it's like a trash fire. You know, it's it's trash, and it's burning, but there's some warmth to it still, so it's still worth watching. Uh, but then again, I also take joy in watching Bollywood movies and uh, B-class uh, horrors and stuff like that. I meet with my friends once every month or a couple of months, less so during this whole pandemic thing, and we order some pizza and we watch some bad movies together. <laughs> so perhaps that's why I also like Arifureta. Uh, this series is a parody of the isekai genre, although not in the same sense as um, Konosuba is. Konosuba relies a lot on uh, direct mockery of the genre, right? It takes all the tropes, and subverts them into haha -ha funny situations. Arifureta uses, um, also uses a little bit of mockery, but also does a lot of exaggeration. Uh, in a regular isekai, there are isekais out there, and it's pretty much a trope by this point. The main character somehow finds a gun, either is uh, reborn with a gun, or finds it in the ruins that his party kicked him into or something, or meets a blacksmith and tells him exactly how to make a gun, because he somehow remembers how guns are made, and names that gun something in German. It's always German. Uh, sometimes he gets a second gun. One is black, one is white. Uh, Schmetterling and Pankufen, or whatever other names he decides to give them. Arifureta goes a step further. Hajime gets a gun, a handgun, regular, you know, pistol. Then he gets an anti-material rifle, then a railgun, then a rocket launcher, and everything is named in German. Then he gets a uh, motorcycle and a Humvee, and it's super ridiculous, it's super edgy, to the point of ridiculousness. Uh, many people didn't like the first season, and not without the reason. Uh, first of all, a lot of those people thought, believed that it's um, a serious show. That it's not a parody, it's actually, you know, seriously done isekai, which tells us a lot about the state of isekai genre. Um, after the anime ended, many people revised their opinions based on the fact that it was a uh, parody. Also, the production value isn't that great. Voice acting is, quite frankly, great, but the CG was the biggest issue. 
CG monsters. I don't want to say they were worse than the goblin army from Overlord. But maybe they were worse, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. At least the CG goblin army clashed with a CG knight's army. And in Arifureta, bad CG monsters clashed with 2D characters and nothing ever connected, nothing ever cast correct shadows, and it was overall bad. I heard I heard that season 2 uh, is made by different staff, it's made by different people, perhaps even a different studio, I'm not entirely sure, we're gonna check it out. And, it's, and the quality is much higher, apparently. So I... I'm curious, I'm interested, and I'm hyped to watch Arifureta done well. Because this series has a lot of potential, and if done well, it can really be great. And I hope the season 2 uh, will bring us that greatness. Anything else that bears mention? No, I don't think so. So, to sum it up, uh, it's a parody series. It's a second season, it's over-the-top edgy, it's over-the-top action, it's over-the-top tropes. Uh, although it does fix some uh, quote-unquote issues of isekais as well. That's another way that it does subversion. Uh, for example, Hajime, you know the trope, when uh, the main character defeats the main antagonist and the antagonist is laying on the ground and the main protagonist just walks away and we never see the antagonist although he's still alive, or the antagonist is uh, shamed and mocked because, I don't know, pissed his pants, scared of the main character, or somehow, sometimes the uh, antagonist stands up and attacks the main character, and a member of his party defeats him, so it's never the main character. Uh, in Arifureta, and that's spoiler for the like very end of the first season, uh, Hajime just straight out executes that dude. <laughs> He's kneeling there and Hajime just puts a gun to his head and just executes him with impunity. And there are more moments like that and I hope there will be more moments like that because it's, you know, a breath of fresh air. Uh, over the top air, like with the amount of oxygen cranked up, but still fresh air. Uh, yeah, that's it. If you want to watch season one, go watch it now. Go watch it with Nozivix links, you know, in the tabs, in the uh, in the comments down below. If you don't care about season one and you just want to watch season two, hey, I guess that's valid as well. So uh, let's let's go on that journey together. One more thing. One more thing. Just last one. I promise. Um, this anime comes out on Thursdays, but Thursdays or Fridays. Uh, I think it's Thursdays, but I already have a slot full for that day, so I'm going to be watching Arifureta most probably on Thursdays or Fridays, and I'm going to be releasing it on Sundays, if I manage to do that. I might be releasing those episodes early on my Patreon, and then releasing it publicly on Sundays. I'll probably do that. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I didn't know that it's... Um, it's coming out this season, honestly, because the first episode came out like a couple days ago, and uh, I honestly thought that Arifureta is gonna be starting in the next season, so I wasn't prepared, and uh, I did couldn't find a place for it in my weekly schedule, so we're squeezing it in that schedule now. Uh, hopefully I'll manage to carry five shows a week. <laughs> Last season it was four, this season it's gonna be five, We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay, uh, let's not prolong that any further. I've already been talking for almost 10 minutes, so uh, let's just jump straight into it. And this is not tea. Uh, it's actually, I think, grape syrup and water. Homemade grape syrup. Okay, uh, let's start the episode 1 of Arifureta Season 2, version by subs, please. Of course, it's subs, please. Version by subs, please. It's gonna be starting in 3, 2, 1, go. 
Animation. Okay, we're starting in Emilia's res. Who are you? Some Valkyrie? And those are floating crosses? Of course it's crosses. <laughs> okay, I can already see that the CG looks better than in season one. Uh, perhaps it's because this little bit of a filmic grain on top of everything. Yeah, classic Hajime. Okay, so she's a goddess. Of course, we're opening with Hajime fighting God. <laughs> okay, and we're starting with the OP already. Yes, there is a great selection of waifus in this show. That's not bad. Studio Mother was responsible for 3D art, apparently. That's not a bad OP. Yep, yeah, here's the Humvee. <laughs> Who are you? The head waifu? The goddess? And Hajime apparently can fly now? Or maybe he could fly even in season one. I'll be honest, I don't remember. Biggest question, how many more waifus are we gonna get this season? <laughs> Irregular. From commonplace to world's strongest. Okay, that's the title in English. Princess? Princess. Yeah, Hajime's classmates. I I'll be honest. I should have watched rewatched season one before starting this. I just realized. <laughs> but you know what? It probably doesn't matter all that much. Yeah, we're getting some exposition already. Yeah, the incident of Hajime being knocked into the uh, abyss, into the uh, labyrinth of whatever, by one of his classmates. Uh, was it the brown-haired dude here? The shady-looking one? I don't remember who was it. It was either the dude who was executed by Hajime, or it was this one. I should... I, I'm probably gonna rewatch season one. Yeah, Great Orcs Labyrinth. This is the hero dude, I think. Like, main hero.
Hajime. <laughs> Who the fuck is Kosuke? Oh. Okay, this dude. <laughs> Kaori went with Hajime, if I'm not mistaken. Is the priestess girl? Yeah, okay. Hmm. Am I misremembering things? Did Hajime not kill one of his classmates? I'm being gaslit right now. I feel like I'm being gaslit because I don't remember. The Gruen Desert. Gruen or Bruen? Hajime rolling with his squad. Uh, ah, okay, yeah, the Humvee is called Brisa. Four waifus and a dotteru. Oh, uh, that's your life now, my dude. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wife who fight. <laughs> I mean, she is the head wife of the harem, after all. <laughs> the first one. But don't you intend to go back to Hajime's world? Cross bit. Okay, I'm assuming those are the floating crosses we see in the OP. The fuck is the funnel? <laughs> uh, I love how self-aware Hajime is. <laughs> yes, they canonically had sex many a time. Ah, uh, poor Hajime, what has your life become? I love her voice. I don't know who voices her, but there is something to it. Oh! That's actually decently looking CG monsters. Maybe it's because of the layer of sand on top of them. But they look better than monsters in season 1. They genuinely do. I 
I think it's all the overlays that are masking the badness of this CG. Or maybe not, maybe they just got better at CG. I'll rewatch season one and I'll have a better comparison. Okay, so the first episode is going full comedy. Gotcha. <laughs> At least she's honest. Yeah, we are in a, you know, tense situation right now. It's going in reverse. Why? Uh, I love the banter. Oh. oh! Of course the Humvee would have rocket launchers. <laughs> of course it would have built-in rocket launchers. <laughs> Why would I think it doesn't have any, uh, any weapons? <laughs> Okay, that's a lot of them. You got any more of those rockets? Of course you do. Oh! Oh! It's... It's not rockets, it's a... It's a... Machine gun. It's a heavy machine gun. Or a automatic anti-material rifle. Wh where's the engine, though? <laughs> I mean, it probably runs on magic or something. Another rifle? Of course, we'll, we're saving that person. Hajime might be an edgelord, but he has a heart of gold. Okay, so it's not a waifu. I mean, you never know, but... That's convenient. Okay, so he's too pent up, and he can debust, essentially, but with mana. I mean, seeing how he's on the verge of death, then I would assume that, yes, indeed, the whatever it ails him progressed very far. Oh, mana siphon. That's useful. I don't remember that happening, but sure. It probably did, I just forgot. How convenient, right? 
And now she's gonna have some energy, some mana stored in that ring when push comes to shove. Okay. Nice to see that the solution isn't, you know, immediate. She casts a spell and boom, he's healthy. Hmm. Good thinking. Close, but no cigar. <laughs> Hands off my waifu. <laughs> Probably a good idea, yeah. Are you our new companion? No, it's just AC. Yeah, I'm not going to remember any of that. Son of the Duke, though, so a highborn. Some sort of a noble. What's he doing in the middle of the desert? Hmm. Okay, so their entire water supply is polluted. Yeah. It's probably not, you know, something that just appeared out of thin air. And of course there's a MacGuffin that can solve the issue. <laughs> Okay, that's why he was in the middle of the desert. Yeah. Everybody looks at Hajime. <laughs> so, Hajime, are we going? We're going. Okay. Dotoru asks that we go, so we're going. It's not like I wanna help you, Babaka. <laughs> Adventure awaits! Right, they have an infinite supply of water.
Oh, it's not over yet. The Demon's Kingdom of Garland. Oh, she was the boss battle of the last season, wasn't she? Right, and Hajime also uh, defended some city. Yeah, that's Hajime. Did they? I'll be honest, I don't remember. Okay. So, the demon general needs a power-up. <laughs> now you won't. Okay, so uh, we're gonna meet him at the whatever volcano, aren't we? Dun dun dun! Oh, that's a nice visual. Okay, that's it. That was genuinely good, to be honest with you. Not, not just good for Arifureta's standards, but genuinely good. Not much happened, to be perfectly honest with you, but still. Season 1 had a couple of moments that when uh, I kind of considered dropping it. Season 2 so far is a step above Season 1. We're gonna go through this episode again and discuss what happened. I don't think we're gonna spend too much time discussing it, but I always do that, so we're not gonna uh, we're not gonna break out of that scheme. And we're also gonna check the staff staff changes and stuff like that. Yeah, I swapped the cups of my earphones from folk from faux leather to those like plush ones and my ears are constantly the point of contact is constantly itching me i need to buy myself some new faux leather caps burning a light okay Let's go through the episode again, shall we? Yeah, 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 animation. Uh, so we are going, uh, we know the end game, but with a goddess. And yes, there is a, there definitely is a film grain on top. And that film grain makes the CG look Less worse, less noticeable. For some reason, I really like this this shot of uh, his arm completely, almost completely blending with his uh, with his coat. Uh, I always, I'm always a fan of this kind of stylization. Uh, I think uh, the Monogatari series also sometimes uses that. I believe, uh, what's it called, Zetsubo Sensei also uses that sometimes when uh, the silhouette of the character is just a cutout covered with a pattern or with a solid color and you just see hands and head and other body parts sticking out of it. There is no shading, there is no uh, you know lines that define the sleeves and, and whatnot. I don't know, it, it looks good. 
uh, not in uh, you know not too much of it but in moderation it looks good i also noticed that there's barely any line work here actually only on the gun there are no hard lines on him no there are some lighter lines on his sleeves okay yeah never mind op 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 surprisingly good op by the by Hmm. We meet the princess, although I think we've met her before. I'm not entirely sure. The heroes return. Uh, right, the one who Hajime executed, I believe, was a dude who was possessed by a demon. I think, maybe. Hmm. I'm not sure. In any case, our team comes back. And there is still some film grain on top. And they talk about what they went through. Uh, the main hero of the party is, of course, very sad because they lost a healer. She decided to go with Hajime. And yeah, Hajime saved him. Hajime defended that city, uh, defeated that demon army. While he, uh, the hero, wasn't able to do much. Um... But that also shows that he's actually a good character. Uh, good as in, uh, you know, D&D uh, &D chart, not good as in decently written. Although he's not written badly. Uh, he's a good person. Maybe that's what I should have said. Um, because he, uh, he saw Hajime showing this much power and now he's wondering, uh, can I defend the things that I should be defending? If Hajime wasn't there, we would have failed. I have to grow stronger. It's a nice uh, nice character trait, nice characterization for him. And we're in the desert. A lot of banter among the waifus. Uh, I love... Uh, I love how self-aware Hajime is of the fact that he looks like an anime character of the fact that yeah his guns his weapons look straight out of anime straight out of Gundam or something <laughs> yeah I I like how he's getting embarrassed and you know uh, influenced by the fact that they point that out that he's not, you know, defending his choices and his look and whatnot. He's just, yeah, I, I do look like an anime character. Can you, can you not point that out? It's not my choice. <laughs> I love that. And of course, wife wars. Uh, the monsters. Yeah, there's constantly some filming grain. Um, it's still not looking all that great, to be perfectly honest with you. I think it's, it's about the shading. There is some very gradient shading on the tentacles inside and on the folds inside of uh, its mouth. In anime, uh, shading and highlights are usually more like uh, the highlights on the saliva. Or the highlights on the um, the neck, the body of this monster, right? They are very hard, very uh, cut off, very separated, and usually with fairly straight lines. But on the tentacles, you see smooth shading, like you would see in you know 3D art, and I think that's that's actually what makes it look not so great, but. The layer of saliva, the fairly fast movement of it, the uh, layer of dust, the uh, bit of screen shake. Yeah, here those waves, the distortion, kind of hides how, uh, kind of hides the badness of this CG, and it ends up looking fairly decent actually. And of course, his Humvee is armed.
why would I think it won't? It's not. See, his Humvee looks much better, even though it's also CG. Uh, you can see all the highlights on the windows and under the windows. They are very hard. Uh, there is no gradients here. And even though it's CG, it looks much better. There is actual like line work on top as well. Yeah, all the shading and all the highlights are uh, very hard. There's a very hard separation. And... Uh, and overall, the areas, the surfaces, are solid color. Which is the usual hand-drawn look. Uh, look at Hajime here, right? His face is a solid color, and there's just a shade that's a different color. And the shadows are a solid shape. There aren't any uh, intricacies to those shadows. There aren't any gradients. That's uh, that's the anime, ha not hand drawn. It's probably drawn digitally. I mean, still by hand, but digitally. Uh, that's the standard anime two D look. Look at every character here. Uh, look at Kaori, right? Her hair is solid color. Then there are solid shapes of um, of shadow and solid shapes of highlights. Also, another thing. they don't move all that much. They change as she moves her head, right? But they don't change, quote-unquote, naturally. Right? They, they change and they fluctuate because every frame here is drawn, every, you know, main frame, key frame. But in case of CG, with every frame of movement, the uh, the shading also changes. Uh, okay, one more thing I have to check. Uh, looking at the animation of those... worms... No, it's actually animated on twos. Yep. It's animated on twos. Um, sometimes also one uh, one reason why CG looks off is that it's either rendered at a completely different frame rate, or sometimes it's because it's way too smooth because it's also animated on ones. Here they are they are actually animated on twos, and that's probably why they also look better. And uh, now we meet. This random dude who has a sickness that causes his mana to pent up, and uh, it's he's gonna burst if he can't get rid of excess mana. And we get a quest. Go and find the MacGuffin to save our village, because everybody in our village is afflicted by the same sickness. Pretty simple quest. Pretty simple task. Uh, although that makes me wonder who poisoned their oasis, who poisoned their village. Is it some kind of a local conflict? Is it the demon army that did it? Is it the heroes that did it unknowingly? I don't know. I'm sure we're gonna learn all about it though. Uh, first we're gonna arrive at the volcano, we're gonna fight with this demon general, we're gonna go back to that village. I'm assuming a Journey to the Volcano is going to be Episode 2, Battle with the Demon General Episode 3, and going back to the village, and the mystery of who poisoned their uh, water supply is going to be Episode 4. Something along those lines. Yeah, our armies were killed, our envoys were killed. I need to acquire a new Age of God magic. <laughs> How can you go even more over than pop, than use the name Age of God Magic? <laughs> even the antagonists are going over the top. And of course it is a sacred mission given to him by God. Uh, the demons appearing here makes me wonder, are we gonna see a demon waifu? <laughs> Maybe. 
And this is actually a nice visual, nice art. It's uh, it's the art, it signifies the beginning of the first arc, kinda. Hajime needs to go through all those demons to get to the general. Very simple message. Who? Okay, uh, yeah, she's with the hero party. Uh, for a moment I didn't, uh, you know... I didn't know who she was, but now I do know that. Okay. Uh, no, wait, one more thing. Uh, one more thing. I wanted to check out the staff changes, right? Uh, Ari Fureta, season two. Mm, there we go. Already has seven, four out of ten on Mall. <laughs> Ari Fureta. There we go. I can close the player. Uh, yeah, second season of Ari Fureta. Uh, one more thing I want to show you. Uh, Ari Fureta CG. Uh, yeah, so there is some comparison with the season one CG. And uh, season one CG is quite frankly atrocious. A uh, couple of examples, yeah, like, look at this, it's even worse, y you see the intricacies of this design, how many layers of shading there are, how many gradients, same here, you see the texture on the legs, uh, any other example, this one, sure. Yeah, those dragon heads, they are all shiny and metallic. This looks like a PS2 cutscene, right? This looks genuinely like a PS2 cutscene. Like something you'd see in a knockoff PS2 Harry Potter game or something. Okay, I, I forgot just how atrocious the CG was in Season 1. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry if I said anything negative about CG in Season 2, because compared to that, CG in Season 2 is fucking Doro Doro levels. <laughs> okay, let's not look at that. Uh, let's take a look at the staff and uh, the prequel as well. Uh, let's do a little bit of a comparison. Stuff, stuff, stuff. Director of Season 1 was Yoshimoto Kinji. Director of Season 2 is Iwanaga Akira. Would you look at that? Uh, script of Season 1 is Sato Shoichi. And the same script, sure. Uh, let's take a look at more stuff. That's something I also want to take a look at. Uh, why are you... Uh, Mal... Work in dark mode, please. I beg of you. Um, there isn't many people listed. There isn't many people listed. Even less so here. Uh, Kojima Chika, Chief Animation Director. And there is no Chief Animation Director listed here. Uh, there is... Assistant Animation Director and, anim and Animation Director, both roles, filled by Okada Maiko. Okay, so yeah, the stuff did did actually change. Mm -hmm. Now, Studios. Season 1 was Studio Asred and White Fox. Season 2 is Studio Asred and Mother. That's the difference. CG in Season 2 is made by Studio Mother. And CG in Season 1 was made by Studio Asrock. Um, and no, uh, White Fox. Which is weird. White Fox has some actually good things on their portfolio. Akamega Kill, ReZero, Stein's Gate, Hataraku Maosama, Goblin Slayer, less so. The CG in Goblin Slayer wasn't particularly great. More Steiner's Gate, more V Zero. Mm -hmm. Yorun Gandur. Shoujo Shumatsu Ryoko. 
how did a studio like this produce this garbage CG? I don't know. But let's take a look at Studio Mother. Oh! Well, that's not a lot. Uchusen Kaniyamato and Arifereta. Those are the only two series they worked on. And series needs to be put in quotations because Uchusen Kaniyamato was just a single episode. It's a compilation of Uchusen Kaniyamato 2202. Um, hmm. So it's a movie? Original Studio Mother, episode 1 episode. And this one was 26 episodes. Interesting. Will Anilis tell us anything more? Mm, two hours. Okay, so it's a two hour movie. There isn't much that Studio Mother worked on, is there? They basically made a recut of an existing series into a movie. And then they were responsible for the CG on Arifereta Season 2. And they did a good job working on that CG. Huh. Interesting. Right, I wanted to check out the voice actors as well, but there are no voice actors listed for Season 2 for some reason, so we're gonna check out Season 1. Why do I still have it on plan to watch? No, I completed it. And uh, it's the best one show that I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> okay, mm, Hajime Ukamachi Toshinari, who also voices... Also voices not many people I would recognize. No, not many people I would recognize. Actually, no people that I would recognize. Not a huge portfolio, but yeah, his voice at Hajime is actually great. Actually great. Wait, they... Oh, she could... He should voice Denji. Uh, no, I think someone else voices Denji in... Um, Chainsaw Man. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So a fairly unknown character. Shirasaki Kaori is voiced by Onishi Saori, who has a much bigger portfolio. For example, uh, Isakai Shokudo, Blue Period, Chitku, Chitku Sushi no Slow Life, uh, a lot of. Uh, a lot of isekais. Danmachi. Date Alive. Monster Muzume. Strike the Blood. Okay, her, her portfolio is much more impressive. Oh, she was Doppel in Monster Muzume. Interesting. Okay. Next character. Yue. Kuahara Yuki. Toru! The voice of Toru! Okay, I did not expect that. I did not expect that she voiced Toru. Huh. Anybody else? Hakua. And uh, Himawari Uzumaki from Naruto movie. And the Raider from Freezing Vibration. Huh. And theme song performance in uh, Dragon Maid. Interesting. Shia Takahashi Minami. Mm, Isakai Shokudo. Lukoa. She's the voice actress of Lukoa. I would never have said that, to be perfectly honest with you. But yeah, here it is. She's the voice actress of Lukoa. Huh. And voice actress of Megumi from Shokugeki no Soma. 
Anybody else I recognize? Not really. And yeah, also theme song performance of the ED. Of Oshia de Galkosan as well. Uh, Tio was voiced by Hikasa Yoko. If it's another Dragon Maid character, I'm it's gonna be weird. <laughs> okay, load. Uh, anybody I recognize? Not really so far. Shaman King Azure Lane. Maju no Tabitai, No Guns No Life. Psychopaths. Oh, Majo from Goblin Slayer. Someone in Infinite Dendrogram. Oh, it's uh, Bia. Is it Bia? It's Saito, it says, but it's probably her Japanese name. Or maybe it's a sister, I've no clue. But yeah, she starred in Pokemon. No Guns Life, Arifereta. Isakai Cheat Magician, Dr. Stone, Frame Arms Girls, mm, that, oh, I just, I just noticed the scroll bar, Popcoin, Pop the Pipik, of course, that is a lot of rolls, holy shit, holy shit, her portfolio. Uh, I'm just gonna do this. Control F. Kobayashi. Uh, she played Kobayashi Kimi in Nighthead. She didn't play anybody in Dragon Maid. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Mew. Why not? What the hell is. Who the hell are you? I have no recollection of this character. Oh, got a Yui. She played. Come on, come on, come on. Um, someone in Takagi-san, someone in Jahisama. She played in Precure. Kagayaki Homare. Okay. Uh, Priestess in Goblin Slayer. And so, also some roles, not many that I recognize immediately. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? No, not really. Okay. So, whatever improvements they made to Arifureta, was like real actual improvements. I don't quite remember how Hajime sounded in season one, although from the comments on Mold, it seems that uh, his voice acting ability has improved. Uh, the CG looks actually genuinely better. It actually does. It looks on par with uh, other anime that use CG for monsters. It probably even looks better than CG monsters in uh, Sai Hat and a Paladin, to be honest with you. Yeah, uh, I, I knew that CG in Season 1 was bad, but I needed that reminder. I needed to see just how bad was the CG in Season 1, and that made me appreciate CG in this season much more. Hmm. I can't believe I say that, but we might actually see some decent anime. Not, not just a decent Arifureta, but a, an actually decent anime. As long as we keep in mind that it's a parody, that it's not, you know, a serious, uh, serious isekai. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited what's gonna happen. I'm excited to feel the cringe. I'm excited to laugh. I'm excited to 
I'll fulfill my inner child's desires for all the edginess. Oh yeah. Yeah. I I desire I crave the edginess. Uh, you probably didn't know that. You certainly didn't know that. You're gonna know that now. But when I was in uh, in middle school, uh, I would wear like leather bracelets with spikes, and I would wear all sorts of pendants on my neck, and I was all edgy, and <laughs> and it didn't work out because uh, it 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 couldn't work out because I was like a maybe not short, but also not the tallest little. Plump, round, fat boy <laughs> with short hair, and uh, yeah, that was a big, big contrast with my spiky bracelets and whatnot. Ah, uh, those were the days. Those were the days. I've been talking for over an hour. What? Seriously? And here I thought that I'm not gonna have much to say about Arifreta, and here we are. I've been recording for over an hour. Okay, uh, it's time to end this then. Uh, so, leave me a comment down below. What you thought of this episode? What you thought of my reaction? Uh, what do you think of this series? Do you think it's gonna go in a good direction, a bad direction? Uh, what are your impressions of season 2 compared to season 1? What are your, your impressions of season 1 as well? Because, you know, there aren't any reactions to season one on my channel, so I'm gonna ask you for your impressions here under the first episode of season two. Did you watch it alone? Did you watch it with Nozivix? Uh, the links should be there, as always, to the season one reactions. Um, like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, but tell me why so I can improve. Uh, subscribe to the channel so you get notified of my future releases, not only Ari Foreta, but also uh, fuck, uh, Sabiquibisco is gonna be coming out tomorrow, um, those Frontline, Symphogear, and, uh, Tokyo 24 Cool. five shows, that's a lot for me, <laughs> yeah, look forward to that, um, if you really like what I'm doing, you can support me on Patreon, Link down in the description for just a dollar a month, you get access to a role and some uh, secret channels on my Discord server. The Discord server itself being open to everybody, link in the description. For 10 bucks, you get early access to my non seasonal shows, which this season it's uh, Symphogear, and you will probably also get a couple of days early access to Arifreta as well, because I need to wait for a free slot, and as I said at the beginning of the, um, of the video. Share this video with your friends, if you know someone who will enjoy it, I guess. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be it from me for today. So as always, do all the good stuff, and uh, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Cheers! And here's the list of Patreons, as always. I wish Patreon had some easy way for me to pull this list from their API or something, but no, I have to update it manually. I don't mind though. Feel free to join, just ping me or something so I can update it so I can update it. Ah.